In this session, we're going to talk about section 8F, the hybrid debt instrument section. Now, what this section deals about is the situation in which a company or a taxpayer issues a, a debt instrument, but we SARS and the Act views that as a hybrid debt instrument, which means they don't treat it as a debt instrument, they treat it as an equity instrument. So let me explain. So let's say there's a company X Limited, and it issued a debenture, and the interest on that debenture is 100,000 rands. So here we have X Limited. Now, if they pay interest of 100,000 rands, they can get a Section 11A and read together with Section 24J interest exemption, uh, deduction for that, 100,000 rands. The recipient, the person who is receiving it, will receive 100,000 rands in interest. And if they're a natural person, they can qualify for Section 10.1i interest exemption, as we know. Now, this is what happens if you issue a, a, a debt instrument. If Section 8F applies, then they tell you the following. They tell you that that interest over there is considered a dividend in specie. So that means when X Limited pays the dividend, when it was interested to claim a deduction, when it's a dividend, we can't claim anything. The recipient will receive 100,000 rands for a dividend, and then 100,000 will be exempt under Section 101K. They will then be dividends tax that you have to consider on that 100,000. And how do we calculate dividends tax? You have to look at the person receiving it. Should there be dividends tax on them? Did they pay, issue a declaration that's, uh, that said that they are not liable for it? Then there's no dividends tax. You apply the normal dividends tax rules. But this is now important for you guys to see. So usually when we issue a de, an, an interest-bearing arrangement, a, de, uh, a debenture or something like that, there's an interest deduction, and the person receiving it is taxed on it. If it's a dividend, there's no deduction, the person receiving it is exempt, and there's dividends tax. So, if Section 8F applies, you have to treat it in this way, as if it's a dividend that was paid. So what does Section 8F talk about? Section 8F talks to a situation, basically, where we've issued an, a debt instrument, but it's actually considered by SARS and by the Act to be an equity instrument in disguise. So let's see. So if you look at the definition of a hybrid debt instrument, this, these are all the hybrid debt instruments. So if you have one of these, if you have a debt instrument that you issued, and it's one of these, then you will treat it in this way. That's the message. Okay, so let's go and talk. So they say the first one is, if you are obliged or entitled to convert instruments to, sh uh, to shares in any year of assessment. Now I had this example here where X Limited gave out a debenture. And let's say the debenture was worth 1 million. Okay, and then the interest on that for, the, for this year was 10%, so 100,000, let's say. Okay. Now, they say, if this debenture can be converted to shares, then it is a hybrid debt instrument. Now think about the logic around this. It's not normal for debt instruments to be converted into shares. It's basically then a shares in disguise. You just first call it a debt instrument and later you make it an equity instrument. That's basically what SARS is, a, is worried about. So what they say is they say, if this, how it will work is this debenture is worth a million. If I say in three years time, it will convert to, um, and let's say, one million shares. Then it is Section 8 F will apply as a hybrid debt instrument. If I, however, say in three years' time, it will convert to shares worth a million, which is the value of the instrument then Section 8F will not apply and you can continue treating this as a debt instrument. So, can you see what, the, what SARS is trying to, what they worry about? They're trying to worry about, yeah, when it's 100,000 shares, the problem is, 
or sorry, a million shares. These million shares, if they're worth one rands each, then it will equal the debenture. But if these shares are worth two rands, 50 cents, three rands, anything like that, it's a different value than what the debenture was. And then it will not apply. Section 8F will apply. So Section 8F applies if you can convert it, but you don't have to apply it if the value of the shares will be equal to the amount owed in terms of the instrument. So like we explained here, so the market value of the shares will be equal to the market value of the debenture. And it is not the situation where I said you issue a million shares and it's worth one rand. That would, you won't know in th today in three years that it's going to be worth one rand in three years' time. So that's not what, what the case would be. You look at it today when you issue this convertible debenture, you say, will this be converted for a fact into shares which have the same value? So if I say it is convertible to a million rands worth of shares, then I don't have to apply it. But if I just say it's convertible to shares, I can't predict what the value of the shares are going to be in future, so therefore Section 8F will apply. Subparagraph B applies. They tell you, if it is conditional upon the market value of the assets not being less than the market value of the liabilities that you pay interest. Okay, so what this section says is it says, I issue this debenture of a million rands to you. I'm X limited that I say. However, I will pay you 100,000 rands a year, but... If the market value of my liabilities, let's say is 100, is bigger than the market value of my assets, let's say that was 80, then I don't have to pay interest. Then this is a hybrid debt instrument. Okay, so let me quickly explain to you why and what the reason is behind this. If I usually, this is the rule, if I pay, if I, if you're my shareholder on the company and you're my shareholder, I will not pay you a dividend if the market value of my liabilities exceeds the market value of my assets. So, that's not a rule for interest. Interest you incur whether your market value of your assets exceeds your market value of your liabilities or the other way around. It doesn't matter. You pay interest all the time. So that's why they worry. They say, if you have this weird rule where if your market value of your liabilities exceeds the market value of your assets, you don't have to pay that interest, then it's a hybrid debt instrument and we'll treat this as if it's... Um, basically an equity instrument. Now, there's one exception to this rule on the next slide. They tell you if a registered auditor has certified that the market value of the liabilities exceeds the market value of the assets, then you don't have to apply this section. In other words, you will continue treating it as if it's a debenture. So the reason for this is, there are things like debt covenants, where they say the person X Limited does not have to pay interest if the market value of the liability sees the market value of the assets. They are debt covenants, but they want you to make sure that an auditor has signed off on it. So it must have gone through a proper audit and been assessed. Small companies which are not liable to be audited, they can't do that. For them, this debenture will be considered an equity instrument. And then the last one is if you owe this debenture to a connected person, and you don't have to redeem it within a period of 30 years from the date of issue, then it is a hybrid debt instrument, and it's considered to be a dividend. Okay, so again, because 30 years is a long time, and it's a connected person. They say here also, it applies to um, any instruments which were converted or exchanged to another instrument. So what that means is, I issued the venture one year, year one, I issue the venture one for a million, and I say it is for 15 years, not 30 years, right? But at the end of the 15 years, I convert that into the venture two, which is also a million, and I say this the venture is for another, let's say, uh, 20 years. So in total, that's 15, and 20 is 35, it exceeds 30, so if it was just 30, so they'll say the venture 2 is the same as the venture 1 because you're just trying to exchange it one for the other. So you need to be careful of that. You can't exchange that. Okay, so guys, in a nutshell again, usually we claim an interest deduction and the person receiving this tax on it may qualify for Section 10 on our interest exemption. But if this is a dividend, there's no de deduction. It's 100% exempt and there's dividends tax. So section, if Section 8 if applies... You must treat it the same as if it's a dividend. So in all of these situations we saw here, where they say to you, Section 8F applies, 
in all of these situations that we just discussed, you have to treat it like a dividend. Right, the exceptions to the rule when it will not apply is if the company X Limited is a small business corporation or if it is a tier 1 or tier 2 capital instrument issued by a bank. Now guys, that is beyond what we need to know at this level. I'm not going to go into detail. I'm definitely on X with myself in that. They will tell you that in an exam. This is, this, they will say X Limited is a bank and issued a debenture which is considered a tier 1 capital instrument and then you know it doesn't apply. And then the last one which we discussed is if it is the way the market value of the assets does not exceed the market value of the liabilities, you don't have to pay. And a registered auditor has certified that. Right, so that's it for section 8F.